Next from Brave Red Smart Frog, this is Toads and Pearls. There once was a child whose mother died. The girl was mournful and sometimes lonely, but she did not turn bitter. In fact, she was sweet as cherries. Along about the same time, there was another child whose father died. This girl was bitter as walnuts. She left the world she felt the world had wronged her and planned to punish it in return. The father of one the father of the one and the mother of the other met and decided to marry. They shared their money, meals, and a small home, living together for a short time in harmony. However, one day the man encountered a hungry wolf, and that was the end of him. He left behind the sweet girl, the bitter girl, and the bitterest of all, a woman who had lost two husbands in only two years. The sweet one had the worst of it. Her stepmother and stepsister made her scrub the floors and wash the windows, beat the carpets and cook the meals. They made her do the dishes, wash the clothes, make the beds, and mend the holes in their stockings. They scolded her and hit her and told her she was worthless. They themselves did very little. They had lost two men, the world was cruel, and they were far too unhappy to make dinner. Cherry, the sweet one, that was her name, was as angry as those to, at those two could be at anyone. Who could blame her? Still, she managed to keep her temper most times and to enjoy the sun on a beautiful day, the taste of good cheese, and the purr of a kitten. Things went on in this unpleasant fashion until early one important morning when Cherry went to get water from the well. It was a walk of some ten minutes, and as she turned home with her jug full, a crona appeared on the path. The woman's fingers were, were long, her nose was hooked, and she staggered and mumbled. She was dirty and her teeth rotted. May I have a drink of that water, she asked. I have no cup of my own. Cherry was tired already. She knew her stepmother and stepsister would be impatient for the water she was carrying. The crone was unclean, even frightening. Cherry wanted to pull back, but instead she looked at the woman's face. What did she see? Need. Cherry offered the jug. The crone drank. When she finished, she said, with, For your sweetness, I reward you with pearls. Cherry laughed. It seemed so impossible. But as she laughed, her mouth filled with small spears. They rolled gently off her lips and into her hand. Cherry looked down to see a pile of exquisite pearls. When she looked up, the crone had disappeared. Now at home, her stepmother was furious. Where is the water, stupid girl? Cherry flushed. She had forgotten to refill the jug. I met a crone by the well, she answered. And she blessed me somehow. As she spoke, pearls began rolling off her tongue. Pearl after pearl after pearl. They clattered to the floor and rolled against the boards. Her stepsister, Walnut, that's what they called her, dropped to her knees to pick them up. Are they real? I don't know. More pearls hit the floor. Pearl after pearl after pearl. Disgusting. They're wet. Sorry. Don't speak then. Sorry. Don't speak. Hand clamped over her mouth, Cherry sat down in a corner. She should speak, you noodle, said the stepmother. Those pearls will be our fortune. Goodness knows we deserve it after all we've been through. And so Cherry spoke. She spoke of frivolities and forests and woods and of wolves and moonlight and past and future. Pearls dropped from her lips with every sentence. You might think it would be uncomfortable, but instead it felt to Cherry as if she were saying exactly what she intended the way you might feel when words roll off your tongue into shiny perfection. It felt surprising, but beautiful and satisfying. The stepmother and Walnut knelt on the floor, scooping the pearls into a basket, wet handful by wet handful, pearl after pearl after pearl. I love you, said the stepmother, and perhaps I haven't told you as much as you might like to hear it. You, my cherry, are a beautiful girl with beautiful curls and beautiful pearls. I couldn't adore you more. The next morning... Cherry set out to bring water from the well, but Walnut was standing outside. She smacked Cherry on the side of the head and took the jug out of her hands. Don't you go again. I'm going. Cherry stopped in surprise. The crone gave you pearls yesterday in exchange for water. If you go again today, she'll give you something else, won't she? Rubies or emeralds or maybe diamonds. Cherry shrugged. I've had a hard life, said Walnut. I lost my father, and then I lost my stepfather. We've got a pokey little house, and nothing fun ever happens. Anyone would feel sorry for me. 
Let me get the water today, and I'll come back with diamonds. Just you wait and see. Cherry left Walnut with the jug and went indoors silently. Whew. As Walnut walked the path to the well, she st- as Walnut walked the path to the well, she stumbled and moped to make herself look as miserable as possible. But the own cr- old crone was nowhere in sight. Walnut filled the jug and began to carry it back, pausing often to sigh and stare at the sky. If the crone was hiding nearby, she would surely see how very unhappy poor Walnut was and reward her suffering with jewels. She was almost home when a small boy ran up behind her on the path. He was dirty and had green goop coming out of his nose. Ooh, could I have a drink of water? He asked Walnut. I have no cup. Not with that nose. Be off. What was? What's wrong with my nose? Go away. Come on, said the boy, wiping his snot on the back of his hand. Be nice. I'm awfully thirsty. Have you seen an, a crone nearby? Asked Walnut. A crone who might be a fairy and takes pity on people, on uh, takes pity on poor, depressed girls like myself. I haven't seen anyone. Please, may I have some water? He repeated. I have no cup. I am horribly dry in the mouth, lady. Get on away from me, said Walnut. Jeremy, little runt, you. At that, the boy kicked her in the shin, making her drop the jug. It broke, and the water spilled out across the ground. <clears throat> For your bitterness, he yelled as he ran away laughing. For your bitterness, I reward you with toads. You're a toad, runt, yelled Walnut, shaking her fist at him. But as she spoke, her mouth filled with slimy objects, each the size of your big toe. She spat them harshly into her hand. There were two brown toads and a green one wiggling in her palm. Disgusting, she said. A large yellow toad formed in her mouth, forced its way way out, and joined its fellows in her hand. Walnut screamed and dropped the toads. As she did, four small red ones leaped from her tongue onto the wet ground, where they splashed happily in the puddle by the broken jug. Walnut stomped them angrily, but they were extremely fast, and even when she managed to step on one, it popped back as if it was made from rubber. Her hand hand clamped over her mouth, Walnut ran home as fast as she could go, the eight toads hopping cheerily behind her. When you can only imagine, well, you can only imagine... Walnut's mother insisted she tell the story of what had happened at the well, and with each word she spoke, Walnut produced another toad. The longer the word, the larger the beastie. Soon the pokey house was filled with toads. Toads in the sink, toads in the cooking pot, toads in the cups and saucers. Toads on shoulders and toes, toads on pillows and sponges, tiny toads in the curves of spoons. And oh, the croaking and belching that filled the house. Walnut stood on a chair and screamed, which only made... Sickly white toads the size of bread loaves forced themselves from her mouth. The stepmother grabbed hold of an iron pot and began banging the toads right and left. But no matter what she did, no matter how hard she bashed them, they popped up again merrily. Cherry opened all the doors and windows and uh, tried to shoo the toads outside, but the longer Walnut screamed, the more they seemed to like it, and as many came back indoors as they coaxed out. This is Cherry's fault, cried the stepmother harshly. If she had not lied about the crone, this never would have happened. And as she came at Cherry with an iron pot looking to beat her with it, Cherry was quick-footed and strong from all her work, though. She dodged her stepmother and ran out the door. She ran for some time, past the outskirts of of the nearest town, and then began to walk. Then she changed direction and kept walking. Cherry never wanted to go back to that house again. She wanted to make a life for herself somewhere now. She realized now that the crone had given her a great gift indeed, independence. With pearls coming from her mouth, Cherry would never again be poor. She would never again... (sighs) She would never again... She would never again need to live with people who were cruel to her, nearly because those cruel people put a roof over her head. She came to a town, rented a room, and paid in pearls.